Hi everyone! I'm Hannah, the museum educator here at the Transcona Museum. Welcome to the second day of Craft With Us STEM Week. Today we will be making DIY bouncy balls. So, for this craft you will need one tablespoon of borax, half a cup of water, two tablespoons of white glue, and one tablespoon of cornstarch. Uh, food coloring, I would suggest it just so you have some color to your bouncy balls, but it is completely optional. The craft will still work even if you don't have food coloring. Uh, definitely have some paper towels handy. This craft gets a bit messy. And have two uh, mixing bowls and some utensils like a spoon to mix with. Alright, so before we get started I'll angle the camera downwards. Alright, okay, so to start we are going to mix the borax and the water together. So I'm just gonna pour the water in my bowl here. And I will throw the borax in. Make sure you don't mix up the borax and the cornstarch. I almost just did that. <laughs> okay. And that was half a cup of water and one tablespoon of borax. So you're going to stir it until the borax is mostly dissolved. Um, with half a cup of water and a tablespoon of borax, I found that... Um, it's not quite enough water to dissolve all of the borax, but that's alright as long as you get a majority of it dissolved. And this is why you need paper towels, because I've already spilt some water over the side of the bowl. should be good. It'll look cloudy. So we'll just put that to the side for now. Take our second mixing bowl and uh, pour your two tablespoons of glue in the bowl. I would suggest having a knife to scrape the glue just because it obviously doesn't pour that well. Get as much of it as you can. It might be a bit hard. All right. So once you have your two tablespoons of glue in your second mixing bowl, you're gonna throw in the one tablespoon of cornstarch. Then you're just going to uh, mix that up. It'll start to form kind of like a, a dough type substance, maybe, maybe like icing kind of, I don't know how to describe it, but it'll start looking like this once you mix it all together. And really make sure you get all of the glue and the cornstarch off the sides of the bowl because the more that you're able to mix and get more of this paste, the bigger your bouncy ball will be. Alright, so mix that up really good. That should be about right. So, you're going to take your borax water and uh, your uh, glue cornstarch mixture and you're going to put the glue mixture into the borax water. All right. Again, I would suggest using a knife. I'm also just going to quickly stir the borax water again, just because it's some of it settled. All 
All right. So I will just scrape in the glue cornstarch mixture into the borax water. And it should almost immediately kind of uh, clump together. You'll definitely need a couple utensils here to do the scraping of the glue into the water. Okay, get as much of it as you can. stuck on the spoon. There we go. Okay. So, excuse me. Um, once you have your glue and cornstarch mixture into your borax water, you're going to start stirring them together and the glue and cornstarch should kind of be clumping together. So as you can see we've got some glue clumps and you're just going to keep mixing so it continues to clump together. After stirring for a bit just let it sit for about 30 seconds uh, to kind of uh, hold it together. You can mold it, start molding it into a shape if it's kind of falling apart as well. So I'm just gonna mold it into more of a ball type shape and then let it sit. All right, okay. So this is what I have so far. I would suggest just letting it sit for 30 seconds. So while we do that, I'll kind of explain the science behind this craft. So when the glue was added to the borax water, the glue became or is going to become firm and bouncy. And that's because the borax reacted with the glue, causing the polymers, which are long chains of molecules, in the glue to stick together and form an elastomer, like the word elastic. So, uh, and the cornstarch was added to uh, help the molecules bind together so that the ball holds its shape. Um, so basically the reaction is all of the polymers clump together. So rather than being separate polymers, they become one and that creates an elastomer or a bouncy ball. Um, an analogy for this reaction is spaghetti. So when you have freshly strained and cooked spaghetti, they, the pasta noodles kind of flow together like a liquid, sliding and slipping over one another. But after a few minutes after the water has been drained, the strands start to stick to each other and the pasta becomes kind of rubbery and a solid chunk. And just think of the pasta noodles as polymer and once the water's out and the different the borax and the cornstarch are uh, reacting they start to stick and clump together all right so so far i've let it sit just gonna mix the clump around in the borax water um, and keep mixing it. It'll help the firmness of the glue. Alright. So, if you take it out, you should have something like this. Now, if you were wanting to have a colored bouncy ball like the ones that I showed you here. Uh, you would need to put food coloring in um, with the glue and the cornstarch. Alright. So 
so you're just gonna squeeze it. Uh, it's important to kind of squeeze it because uh, the glue will be still kind of runny in the inner parts of your clump. So get those runny parts on the outer sides of your ball and um, sink it back into the water so it becomes uh, firm. So you're just going to kind of keep working it in and out of the water to get its circular shape to make it firm and make sure that there's no runny parts of the glue left. It does, it is a, a bit of a process. It doesn't take too long, but it definitely takes um, a couple of tries to kind of get your ball to the shape and uh, density you want it to be. So just mixing it around. In the collection here at the museum, we have a lot of fun children's toys like bouncy balls. We have uh, jacks, we have dolls, toy cars, toy trains, footballs, a lot of different items. Um, we actually have some on display right now. If you're interested, definitely uh, visit the museum. We have a, a, a display of children's toys. One item in the displays that I think is my favorite is um, at the Apollo Theater that was located uh, just down the street from the museum on Regent Avenue. Um, they used to give out um, plates and like different bowls and um, to anybody who bought a ticket to come see a movie so it would encourage people to come to multiple movies so that they would eventually gain a set of dishes and we have some of those um, dishes on the, the kid in the kids toy display and I just think that's that's so funny it's such a funny incentive but hey and the plates are really cool actually all right so as you can see, I've been working it in and out of the water, and I kind I have my ball shape. It's pretty much at the firmness I want it to be. Um, basically, for reference, the firmness you want is just so that when you squeeze it, you're not getting any liquidy glue um, coming out. It's it's completely um, it feels completely elastic, I guess. Um, and after you kind of get the desired shape and feeling of your bouncy ball, you're going to get it to become like this or like this uh, by drying it. So take some paper towel, kind of squeeze it out. If you're still finding it's a bit too sticky, you can dunk it back in the water. It's kind of... Um, trial and error until you get it to how you want it. So I'm just drying it. Making it into a ball. All right. So here is um, the DIY bouncy balls. See, the shape will change. Um, I would suggest not leaving it uh, sitting flat on a table for a long time because it does kind of flatten out. So uh, putting it in an airtight container will help uh, stop that. Um, but Here's my bouncy ball, and you can add food coloring. So you have colored ones like this one to your glue and cornstarch mixture. And once it 
continues drying and becoming um, more solid as it dries, you'll get your really big bounces. Um, but yeah, it's already pretty bouncy. So there you have your DIY bouncy ball and make as many as you want so you can have multiple. And there you go. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed making the bouncy ball. Uh, join us on Friday uh, at the same time here on Facebook Live to make a snowstorm in a jar for our last day of STEM week. Uh, you can also craft with me in person. We have time slots for 10.45 to 11.30. 1 to 145 and 3 to 345 if you'd like to craft with me in person. Uh, just so you know, masks are required at the museum. Uh, and also next week will uh, be cooking week. So on Monday we'll be making edible gardens. On Wednesday we'll be making edible marshmallow paint. And on Friday we'll be making butter in a mason jar. So lots of exciting things coming up. I hope you can join. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.